was the music video for Clouds, the inspiring song written and performed by Zach Sobiak, a Minnesota teenager who was diagnosed with osteosarcoma, a rare bone cancer. Since being released in 2012, December of that year, the video has been viewed more than 12 million times on YouTube. The song has hit number one on iTunes, and Zach's story touched countless people all over the world. After a four-year battle with cancer, Zach passed away on May 20th of last year, and like so many, I was moved by Zach's courage and grace. Just over a week after he died, I spoke with his mom, Laura, on our show, and now one year later, she's looking back on how Zach learned to live while dying in her, her book called Fly a Little Higher, How God Answered a Mom's Small Prayer in a Big Way. So please welcome back Laura Sobia. Hi, Laura. So, you know, I mean, it's just Zach's story is so amazing and so moving, and I'm so, I feel so privileged that I can continue to share what an extraordinary son you had. Oh, thank you. Yeah, he was an amazing kid. Tell me why you wanted to write this book, because I know you've been through so much yeah. already. Yeah, I, you know, over the years that we battled cancer with Zach, I just had sort of tucked away certain memories certain poignant moments that I thought, oh, I, I need to write about that. And I didn't know it would be a book. As a matter of fact, I didn't think it would be a book. I thought it would be maybe a blog or something like that. And then I had an opportunity to write a book, and so I took it. And so last summer, I spent the whole summer writing. Was it cathartic for you, or was it, uh, it must have been very yeah. um, emotionally challenging in it many was, ways? It was. It was. It was agony. Actually, the most difficult parts for me to write were the fun parts, you know, like the big concerts that he got to be part of, or, you know, making the My Last Days video. All those fun things were really hard for me to write about because I was in mourning, you know, and it was just emotionally I wasn't checked into those. So that was difficult. But I do think there was a sense of peace about doing the project too because I was getting it down. You know, I was I was preserving these memories that I'd held on to for for the duration of our battle. and I know that Zach was diagnosed with a very rare cancer called osteosarcoma when he was a freshman in high school. And he went on and, and received a lot of chemotherapy, multiple surgeries. Uh, ultimately, the cancer spread to his lungs and the chemotherapy stopped working. So how did you make the decision to stop focusing on treatment and focus on Zach's quality of life? Yeah, the, um, we got to the point where he could have had a very radical surgery that he would have lost one of his legs. He wouldn't be able to sit up for months. And so it just became that point in time where we had to decide what, how much are we willing to sacrifice to buy a little more time? And you know, we were really blessed that Zach was old enough to really make that decision himself. And he just decided that he didn't want to do that. He didn't want to waste his time recovering from something like that and chose instead to, to use the time that he had to just be, to live like, like a teenager should live. And that's, that's what he chose to do. After Zach passed away, I know you did a follow-up documentary about him called One Year Later. And we're going to take a look at a clip of that. There was one time where he was, like he was wanting to grab somebody's hand, so I walked over and I grabbed his hand. And it was so warm and rough from the medication he was taking, and his fingers were calloused from the guitar. And he grabbed my hand really tight, but I just held it to my cheek, and then he opened his eyes, and I said, you don't have to stay here. You can go. And I said, okay. That must have been so heartbreaking for you. And, and, and obviously, to talk about it in your book, to talk about it here with us today. And, and so much of, of Zach's life was documented. Yeah. And, and has that been helpful to you, or has it been also painful for you? A little bit of both. I think it's probably been more helpful than painful, though, just because 
I get to talk about Zach all the time. You know, I get to share his story. He was an amazing kid. And I get to see, as a result of sharing that story, I get to hear and see how he's affecting people. And it's in big ways. The kind of courage that he showed for just a teenage boy, you know, knowing that his life was going to end right. sooner rather than later, and yet not wallowing in self-pity, really focused on, on externally and, and mm -hmm. living life to the fullest and helping other people. I mean, I, I think that's such a rare, an incredibly rare gift. I do too. How was he able to do that? You know, he was, he was a very empathetic soul from a very young age. He just cared so deeply, especially for people who suffered. And I think one of the, I think that was a benefit for him as he was suffering himself because he didn't f turn inward so much. He turned outward and he felt bad for us. I, I remember one time just asking him, have you ever been angry? Because he hadn't really shown that. And he thought about it for a minute and he said, you know, mom, if somebody has to have cancer, I'm glad it's me because I couldn't handle watching somebody go through what I'm going through. And that was the moment where I thought, oh, he so gets this, you know, that, that he was just so empathetic that way. And he didn't want to despair. And one of the things with the book that I really wanted to do was sort of show that part of him too that really struggled with this disease because it's ugly and it's hard. And he, he struggled. I mean, there were times where he bordered on despair. But I think where Zach differed from, from some people was that he didn't want to despair. He didn't want to go there. So he was very willing to um, sort of turn to us for help and very willing to accept any comfort that we could offer.